first lesson this morning is taken from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galilean? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose. For it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be, God, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved hear what the spirit is saying to God's people and speak to God of Psalm 104. We will read responsively by the whole verse. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom, in, wisdom, you made. in wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your set creatures. Under us grace the great and wise sea, with its living things to many number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, 
and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All the men look to you, to give them their food in the season. You give it to them, they gather it, you open your hand, and they are filled with good things. I hide your taste. You send forth your spirit, and they are and they are created. So you and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord be forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing the Lord's songs. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, my soul. Believes in 
in me will also do the works that I do. In fact, will do greater works than these. Because I am going to the Father, I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides in you, and he will be in you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you. to the 
same for terms. Yes. 
When I moved to Frederick, I was quite broken from personal tragedy. And I needed to heal. Now, I was a good scientist. I had good hands. And so I had a good job working in the lab. And in the lab, I worked day and night and weekends. But on Sunday, I looked around and found a church. And that church was a small, small stone building. Inside, the iconography was very much like yours. And that was the parish in which I stayed and served 25 years as I slowly healed. I was vestry member for 12 years. I was junior warden and senior warden. I taught Sunday school. And all those years, as a lab scientist, I never had a single scientist say to me, why do you bother with the church? Indeed, in the first 10 years, a tragedy happened in which the secretary for our group's son, 12-year-old Jeff, got tangled up in some straps in a barn and died by hanging. But he was not dead yet when rescued, was sent to the shock trauma unit at University of Maryland. And my boss called me. He said, you do church, right? And I go, yeah, I do church. He says, go to the University of Maryland. I said, okay. And off I go. I get there, and his mom is, of course, grief-stricken, panic mode, very worried, afraid Jeff will die, and so the doctors think he will too. And I said to Karen, what can I do for you? And she said, when Jeff was born, without the benefit of marriage, the Episcopal priest would not baptize him. I would like him to be baptized. I said, give me water. And I baptized the child. And afterwards, I panicked. I thought, why oh, I done stepped out of my place. <laughs> so I called my priest. And I said, well, I just did this. He said, it's okay. In emergency, anyone can do that. Do you hear me? In an emergency, anyone can do that. We are church. We had the service. Karen had a long way, long road of recovery. Losing a child is devastating. Then things got really tense. I was a professor at Wood for many years, and one day I got co opted into being dean of the graduate school just to fill in for a year, which turned into nine. <laughs> then I was tired, drained, and I needed to reset. So I had this piece of paper in my files that said you may have your sabbatical when you ask for it because they took it back when they recruited me. And so I went and I said I need this sabbatical and I went to Thailand. I lived in a cold water flat on the sixth floor of an apartment building where I spoke maybe a hundred words of Thai. And the first thing I did was find out if there was an Episcopal church in Bangkok. So I got the map, and I, it said red bus. I got on the red bus, first red bus that came by, and I ended up at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to say to the police, I need to go to this place. And I pointed at the map, he not speak English. So I got back on the bus, retraced my step, looked at the map again, and found a little legend that said, this red bus, big bus, goes this way. This little air-conditioned, more expensive red bus goes this way. Ah, got it. Small, air-conditioned red bus. Get on the bus. End up downtown, financial industry. Walk down the street. Ah, Christ Church, Bangkok. So, Sunday morning, I get on a red bus, a small bus, like that, and go down the hall and go to church. So I get a bulletin, it's all in Thai. I have to read a word, but I know 
what's going on because we all know what's going on no matter what the language, right? Pentecost. But then I saw in the notes that they had an English service at 11. Sundays thereafter, I would go at 11. <laughs> Came back home and another tragic event occurred that got my attention. And I started to ask that most important question. What does my life as a scientist and a person of faith, how do they interact? How do they enforce one another? How do they talk to each other? Or am I just living parallel existence on the daytime, Monday through Friday, I'm a scientist, and on Sunday, I'm a Episcopal. So I did EFM, that's Education for Ministry, a four-year program, Theological Reflection, started to lay a few cross ties. Long story short, I spent a lot of time at the bedside of the diet. You can do that as a lay person. I did it for a long, long time. But then somebody came along and said, you are called to the priesthood, and I said, you're full of it. <laughs> I am a teacher, not a priest. He said, no, you're wrong. Your life's about to take a big turn. I'm like, no way. <laughs> yeah, way, he says. And he was, I guess, correct, because pretty soon thereafter I found myself in seminary, and then I started to serve parishes as rep. I'm going to ask you what I ask every parish I serve. Why are you here? Some of my parishioners gave me a history lesson about how the church was built, who the family and families were, and what we mean to the well, that may well be true. I'm sure it is. Check. Why are you here? Why are you here today? Why is Trinity an important part of Swanton, Vermont, today? What is your mission? The church's mission is reconciliation of all people with God. That's what we're all called to do. And we're all ministers of the church. None of us get off the hook. You don't get to be a congregation gathered around the rector. That's a recipe for disaster. Because let me tell you, when I had a parish of 500 people, if they all expected me to make every visit, every time they needed something, or to know that they were supposed to be on the prayer list, and they didn't tell me, or whatever, I would disappoint over and over and over, and then we'd be in chaos. No, we are a community gathered. I do my part. I'll do the sacramental part. I said to your uh, pastoral care team this morning, I'll go where you send me, but I'm not going to usurp your ministry. Your ministry. So we are ministers together for reconciliation of God with all people. How did we get there? Because Acts tells us they were all gathered together in one place. They were praying and chaos happened. And out of chaos comes called creation. So let me close by this one moment that touched me very deeply. It was at St. John the Evangelist on the Charles River in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I worshipped there while I was in seminary. And every Sunday, the priest would hold up the host and he would say to the congregation, Behold what you are. And our response was, May we become what we see. I invite you to 
reaffirm your faith and the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God.
Train us to interact with creation from a place of wonder, awe, and reverence. Lord, in your mercy. We remember all of those who have departed. Earl of Flam, the Reverend Mary Haas, Jeremy Chapel. And we remember with care and compassion the millions worldwide who have died during the pandemic. Gather your people across regions, nations, and lands. Root our, root our common life in life, death, and resurrection of Christ. And by your Spirit, bind us together with all the saints who have gone before us. God, in your mercy. Lord, hear the prayers of thy people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually. To the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by thy mercy on us, and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of His great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who in hearty repentance and true faith turn into Him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, 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 peace,
and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, according to whose true promise, the Holy Ghost came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to thy church the power to serve thee as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying,
Hallelujah. Christ, our sacrifice, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. Be present. Be present. Oh, Jesus, our very high priest, as you were present as a disciple, be known to us and break the bread.